What are stakes? <laughs> Something that confuses a lot of uh, a lot of writers. It's um, so stakes are very generally like whatever hangs in the balance um, with regard to what your character is trying to achieve. So a lot of movies are very clear external, you know, life and death stakes, right? If your character doesn't um, escape the serial killer, then they will die, right? The, your protagonist will die, so then it's life and death stakes. Um, so it's whatever consequence would would come in, would come to bear if your protagonist fails to achieve their story goal. That's sort of how I would define it. Why are stakes important? Uh, well, I think stakes are important because that's if if there's nothing at stake, then the story doesn't matter, right? If um, if your protagonist is trying to achieve a thing, but nothing, there won't be any consequence to it, then I don't know if your audience will remain engaged in the story, right? Because we we sort of if we if we understand that a, that um, a series of events doesn't matter, it doesn't have any consequence to it. It's inconsequential. I think most of us would check out. Could be entertaining for a while, but eventually we'll be like, oh, okay, I you know I don't really care about the ending of it. So whatever's at stake in the story is really what sort of gets us to care about the outcome. Yeah, and I know, again, we use hustle as an example, mm -hmm. and I think that's what got the film for me. That's why I liked it. I'm not really into sports, but the the, the stakes that were involved, and it was numerous times. Yeah. That was what was so great, is you thought you got through one hurdle, and then there was another one presented. Yeah, and I think, you know, all of these elements sort of go hand in hand, right? They all depend on each other to kind of create the effect that you want them to create on the audience. So what's great about hustle is, like, it... It's not life or death stakes. It's not that you know high stakes of a of a movie, but you feel so much for that character that what's important to him is important to you. So that you know what this career means to him. It's the only thing he's ever done. It's what he loves. It's you know what he's dedicated his whole life to. There's the feeling that if he sort of washes out now, his whole life will be meaningless, or you know he'll have invested all this time in something that ultimately didn't matter, had no out, no uh, consequence. So all of that is wrapped up in what's at stake for him. So what I was describing earlier, sort of the external stakes of like, what's the consequence that will happen if your character fails, right? That's usually in a movie, there's something external at stake. So life and death stakes or like somebody's safety or, um, you know, losing the house or, or what have you. But then there's also the sort of internal stakes of it, the emotional stakes of it, which is really like what it means to your character. So, you know, it's important for the Adam Sandler character to um, achieve that goal because of all that stuff that it represents to him. And that's that, I think, is the more emotional side of things. And that's what really gets us like emotionally invested in a story, you know? Right, I think there's like one scene in the beginning or close to it where Adam Sandler's on the phone with someone. He's like, 50 year old guys don't have dreams. We have nightmares and panic attacks or something. <laughs> yeah, like, really yeah cool they that. do such a good job of like layering that stuff in, right? Of, of just exactly what does it mean if he fails to, you know, get this last career thing? Because it, it would be very easy for that movie to sort of hit all of the the plot beats that we expect, but to feel empty, right? Like that would have been the, the bad version of that movie of like, you know, a near retirement guy has one last chance to get a player signed. And you could see that playing out in a way that the plot would make sense, but because they went the extra, you know, the extra mile in terms of like developing that character and what it all meant to him, that made it, you know, I loved that movie. It made it very emotional for me instead of just being like, oh, this is a fun movie about guys playing basketball. It was much more about the Adam Sandler character and sort of, you know, that was like a redemption story for him. It was like, my life hasn't been a waste. I'm not too old to accomplish things. You know, all of those things I think were layered into that movie and that's what made it, that's what actually made it a movie that I would recommend to people versus one that I watch and forget about, you know? And and then without giving away too much, the basketball player has his own stakes. Mm -hmm. And then you also see that part of the stakes for Adam Sandler is proving to the basketball player that I'm, I'm actually not gonna let you down. Yeah, that's what was really great about that movie too, is that relationship between those two guys. So it's very much an underdog sports movie. And the two of them are sort of the only, you know, the, the only two, the only person that each has in their life that really believes in them in a way that 
that sort of matters and they can help each other. And so they're two underdogs sort of working together to achieve this big thing that nobody thinks they can achieve. So yes, that, that made me root for them. <laughs> you know what? I love that. Two underdogs working together. That's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. That's what works about it. How do we know the stakes are high enough for the audience to be emotionally invested? Mm, that's a good. It's a good question, and I think that's one of those things that's a little bit, um, you know, trial and error in your in your writing. You do what you can to um, create the stakes in your story, external and internal. Um, try to plan them out in a way that that you feel like will be enough to get the audience invested. But that is definitely one of those things that, you know, in completing the first draft, sometimes you have somebody read it and they're like, I don't really understand why this matters or I don't know why I should care about this story. And then you know that the stakes <laughs> aren't coming through, right? They may be high enough, but they may just not be conveyed on the page in a way that the whoever read it, you know, can understand why they should care. So there's both the aspect of like, you know, planning as you're developing your story thinking through what's at stake and why this is going to matter and what it means to the character and so that's why the audience will care about it. Um, thinking through all of those questions and, and making sure that's in your story, that's half the battle. And then the other half is actually figuring out how to put it on the page in a way that your reader can pick it up, right, and can understand and can feel sort of what's at stake. Yeah, I think that was what was my problem with Bridesmaids when I heard about it and it mm. came out and everybody was raving and I was turning on the radio and, oh, Brides, and I'm like, oh, another one of these female on female hating each other and competing. I don't want to see that. And it's it's not, it's so well done. And there's, mm -hmm. you you really see, okay, no, this is, there's a lot more layers to this. Yeah, and actually you bring, a, you bring up a good point because seeing Helen come through in the end and sort of change a little bit and seeing that she and Annie don't end the movie totally at odds with each other, I think that that was really important to to the the sort of, you know, overall bigger picture of that movie, which was like, it's not about women competing against each other. It's actually about the female friendship, right? And so even the fact that the protagonist and antagonist can come through the end of this experience, learning enough about each other to kind of not hate each other and not be working against each other, that was an important lesson in the movie too. Can you help us understand the difference between the stakes for the protagonist and the antagonist? Oh, sure. Um, I mean, I think each character needs to have something at stake. We probably need to understand what's at stake for the protagonist a little bit more, right? Because we're entering the story through that character and their experience of it is really what we're sort of tracking and writing along with through the entire movie. Um, so just in general, I would say that, you know, the protagonist stakes are probably going to be more developed, um, both externally and internally. We're probably going to spend more time understanding those stakes, um, establishing them in the movie, and then, you know, escalating them across the, the movie. Um, but I do think that the antagonist should have something at stake as well. Otherwise, um, I think that's when you get, you know, kind of like I mentioned earlier, you get maybe one of those movies that hits certain plot beats but feels a little bit empty. If we don't understand why the antagonist is doing what they're doing as well, even if it's in very broad strokes, you know, um, I think it can feel a little, a little empty, a little cartoony, or even a little bit sort of like it doesn't have emotional logic, you know. Sure. Did you see the movie, the, the, is it the bookshop? No. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What I was that one? That one. Um, it was so good. It was with Patricia Clarkson, mm -hmm. who's like this sort of wealthy woman who has started this art society in her town. And then a new younger woman comes in and opens up this bookstore. Mm. And that causes Patricia Clarkson standing in the community. Like, like who is this? And you're doing this in my town? I'm sorry. And then the young woman starts to put these beautiful book displays and everybody comes in and they love their books, the bookstore. And then she does Lolita, mm. the book uh, by Nabokov in the, in the um, window. And that's Patricia Clarkson's in. And you will not have this in my town. <laughs> but really her, her motive is you won't show me up. Mm -hmm. that, that's really what yeah. it's about. And it's so well done. And um, it, it's, it's about this sort of, you see each character stakes. Mm -hmm. uh, one just wants to do it because I forgot what the reason was. She needed something in her life and this gave her joy. And then the Patricia Clarkson, it was more about, you know, her image and power and yeah. the two, the two that, uh, 
Well, you bring up a good point. I haven't seen that movie. I will add it to my list. But um, but I think you bring up a good point, which is, you know, when the conflict is more uh, character-based or more sort of like emotional rather than physical, um, I think we probably need to develop the stakes more, right, in order to understand sort of why are these characters in conflict? Why are they taking the actions that they're taking? Whereas if you have something very external, very, you know, action-y or like horror movies are often high stakes, they're, they're life and death situations, but because it's such an external physical uh, conflict, we understand easily why this is important, right? We understand it's a life and death situation, so you don't really have to explain it <laughs> as much or develop it as much. It's still useful, I think, if even in um, movies that have very clear, you know, external stakes, if you develop the internal, the meaning of it as well, right? Because that helps us get sort of more emotionally invested in the story. Um, but yeah, the I think the story that you brought up, that bookshop, is a good example of having um, you know, the conflict is really, it's character based and it's, um, it's in, not internal, but it's, um, it's not a physical sort of conflict between the two of them. They have these like big emotional stakes for each of them. They're standing in the town or their reputation or whatever. And so you have to develop those so that the audience understands what's motivating them to do the things they're doing, because we don't immediately understand why someone would you know, take those actions that they're taking in the story, you know?